What's up? We're back with the house cast, and I know it's been a while. I mean, you know, you know how it goes, guys. I mean, I'm not gonna be able to do this all the time. I got a lot of new things I've been getting into. I've been making a lot of music. I've been um, working on a lot of new interviews. The actual, I've done more interviews than um, house cast now, which is kind of weird because house cast is what I originally started the channel uh, doing, which is we. Uh, it's not. It's weird because like I would have thought the house cast would have gone larger, and I never thought I would have got into uh, interviews so much. But I, I've been starting to realize my roots and loving Adam Twenty Two and Joe Rogan, and I've really sort of found like a sort of a, a sort of urge to like interview larger people because it's cool to tap into different people's fan bases and stuff. But I gotta realize what my roots are, and that's Hascast, this solo show where I'm I'm always trying to bring out the best and telling you the latest entertainment that I've been doing and uh you know just checking out in terms of music and movies and old stuff that I'm reminiscing on with the nostalgia case, it's always been a great thing, so I'm going to explain to you the structure of the show, and then we'll get into a new episode, because I always got to explain to you the structure in case a new uh, listener is checking it out, um, this is episode 46, and also if you're listening on any audio platforms, be sure to subscribe and download each episode also, in the description, we have a lot of sponsors. We also have some merch. We also have the Patreon for exclusive early access content. I'm always posting on there every week something new. Um, I have a so far gone Drake reaction on the Patreon. I tried to upload it to YouTube, but got removed. And that's what I got updated on the channel. And also, tonight, I will be going on live with Adam the Shinobi, an amazing rapper out of Texas, part of the Akuma Clan, an awesome funk rapper, and we're going to be discussing Drake versus Pusha T, because that was a recent controversial post I was posting about, about how people are disliking uh, uh, Fantano uh, because people uh, often uh, agree with his uh, opinion too much, to the point where it kind of decides the way hip-hop Twitter goes. I was on hip hop Twitter and I'm sort of disappointed in it now because of the fan base. Like the, the fan bases on there are so toxic. They're not really appreciative. Like when you find like a sort of Drake page or like a uh, Freddie Gibbs page or something about it, there's always someone coming in there just trying to say something real controversial. So then they're always swaying someone's opinion. And that's why I've been finding recent appreciation for the film fan pages because they're often way more appreciative of the art. I feel like what people, what the rap community has to realize is to start appreciating the art more instead of just arguing about, like, which one's better than the other. Like, not everything's a competition. If you're a rapper and you're competing with someone and talking with them, I get that. I get you wanting to be sort of competitive and stuff like that. But um, I'd say what, I, what I'm looking forward to tonight is not just to scream my opinion at Adam about, you know, Drake being better than Pusha T. Um... I just want to connect with Adam again and see what he's up to and see how Akuma Clan is going and how uh, his how his work's going. I'm more excited to so to connect with Adam the Shinobi and also his fans because he got a really good fan base. I'm also just interested to see maybe his opinions on Godzilla vs King Kong because he had a Godzilla um, on the cover art of one of his latest um, tracks. So definitely check out Adam the Shinobi's music and also man um, in terms of Godzilla vs King Kong. I don't know man. I think I'm. I'm on King Kong's side for this one. Um, I feel like he's, uh, you know, I, I got the I got the blood of King Kong in me because he is he he's um, he's part of my family. He's part of my genes. Okay, and I can relate to King Kong more. And also, King Kong is like really um sort of hated by anybody. Like I always, I often feel bad for King Kong. I often don't feel bad for Godzilla. I feel like Godzilla, King of the Monsters, though, that was a great movie. It came out in like 2018 or yeah 2018 it was a, it was a great flick it might have been 2019 i don't know but i loved it the uh but yeah let's go into the uh, first review okay so i recently saw news of the world's pgt 13 western and let's pull that up you know how it goes and yes yeah, so it's got tom hanks and I feel like this film is sort of about the importance of information in an age where there is a lack of it. Uh, this film is really excellent because it showcases how a character in pain deals with that trauma. It sort of has some cool fish-out-of-the-water elements to it. This film uh, it sort of has like this character who's had a lot of trauma in his life due to the crazy world around him and 
all the conf- conflicting views in the world and he's just trying to start a, a new life and it also has like this cool story how he is a storyteller because what he does this character played by tom hanks he goes to random towns and sort of introduces uh, the news to these people by reading it and a lot of people pay for him to read it to them because he's a really good storyteller but also a lot of these people in these western towns cannot read not everybody's really literate at this time because there is no standardized education system like we have today where everybody's forced to go to school everybody's forced to live everybody's forced to go you know learn and read all these different um fields of uh, education in the workforce. Not everybody's forced to do that. Education is sort of, see, sort of seen as a privilege back then, uh, as a and not as a right. Now it's seen as a right. Everybody has a right to education. Not everybody had a right to education to learn. So it's good to see um, in this time Tom Hanks's character is being so generous to do this, and he also makes a lot of money off it. Meets a lot of new people, and he meets this um, little young girl who is whose family is murdered. She's a part of an Indian family, but she's German, um, and her family is kind of murdered by. Uh, sort of you'll you'll see it in the movie i don't want to spoil who does it and all of that but she she sort of um they have this sort of protective bond where like um there's a lot of really rogue criminals and desert storms that get in the way of this um older gentleman trying to save this girl and bring it to her family and stuff like that and um yeah it's really awesome western it's a joy to watch where the runtime was a bit much. Um, it did get a little slow towards the middle, not too much. But um, what was interesting to see is that it was written and directed by Paul Greengrass, the uh, one of you directed a couple of Bourne films and stuff like that. So that was cool to see. Um, and actually, what was surprising to see is that this was filmed before the pandemic. It was filmed in 2019. It's just getting released recently. So that was cool to see as well. Um, I would definitely recommend this to those who enjoy like Disney adventure films, but they also enjoy like Westerns. You'll see get a lot of cool information about like uh, America and the sort of a uh, reconstruction era. You know, this is set in the reconstruction area post uh, Civil War. Um, and I really love the, the I love history films. I'm a history buff. So this is cool to see. Um, I'd say the tone of this is slightly darker, but not too dark, and it it's pretty pretty it's really PG thirteen. Like there is a lot of blood. Like when someone gets shot, things are flying everywhere. But you don't see like organs. Like you don't see like, someone's intestines being pulled out. But you damn near close to that. You know what I mean? So yeah, I would not rewatch this. I'll give it a worthy investment of time on the watchability scale. That's what I'm gonna give it. Um, but yeah, definitely check out News of the World. Great new flick. Um, but like, I'm definitely a check. I definitely recommend like, this is a cool family movie, but also I could see like a lot of older people enjoying this as well. Like if you're a fan of the Western, if you're a fan of like adventure movies in general, it does span a lot of areas and stuff like that. There's a lot of set pieces and stuff. It's a really cool movie. Um, and I was really glad that I saw this. Okay. So yeah, so that's what we got for the film reviews. Now let's go into a little news of what's been, uh, sort of going on in the film world um you can definitely check this out is you could check out the first look at jared leto as the joker in the snyder cut and i'm gonna pull an image of this up soon um and it's kind of weird okay so it's kind of surprising the way it looks and uh, i'm not a fan of joaquin phoenix's joker and um i'm gonna be straight up about that i'm not gonna be able i'm not i can't lie to you guys about that um, but this is what it looks like, as you can see, and I, like, and I was a big fan of Jared Leto's The Joker, I just feel like the, uh, editing and the screenwriting of, um, the Suicide Squad was a bit, eh, you know, it, it could have been a, I feel like there should have, the Joker should have been the villain of it, or something, or, um, should have been the main focus of it, um, but I don't think it was horrible, I think I'd give it, like, a probably... Uh, I, it was definitely rewatchable, but on like a scale of one to ten, which I rarely do, but I'm gonna have to do it for this. I'm gonna do like a six out of ten. It kind of felt like a Thor: The Dark World. That's how I felt about Suicide Squad. It was kind of like Thor: The Dark World. And I think what I like about DC is that it's not always no, nothing is always trying to be set up. Like the thing about Marvel that gets kind of old is they're always trying to set up thirty different fucking storylines, um, and that gets really annoying. So that's what I had to say about Jared Leto being in the Snyder Cut, I don't think he's going to play a large part unless he is, go- unless they're really um, cool about editing and doing that, and if it's real long or something like that, I feel like it'd be a really cool miniseries, but who fucking knows, I feel like it's going to be a real uh, interesting experience, it's going to be real different in terms of like, 
super hero flicks, but I feel like it's kind of like being like, I hope when people see it, they're not just going to be like, oh, that was bum, that was, over, that was overhyped. But I feel like there's going to automatically be that. Like, everybody wants things to be overhyped. You know, they always want to see something not fulfill their expectations because they always want to rant about something. There's too many people that want to rant about something, and that gets really annoying to me. So let's let's go to an album review. So Bones, Team Sesh, out with a new project. It's released a while ago, so um, probably a couple weeks ago. And we're going to review this. So Bo- Burden by Bones is an album by SoundCloud rap pioneer. And this is one of the most influential artists that came out of his time. Bones is back with another album. And it was an amazing cloud rap album mixed with some emo, horrorcore elements. The hard-hitting songs such as Ethanol have some of my favorite snares I heard so far. It, like, in terms of just, like, I, I have an eye for snares or rim. Like, just cool little percussion used in it. I think uh, the snares in Ethanol were so interesting. And um, there's something piercing about them. Like, I, when snares hit my ear, it's just cool to me. And I, I, if you want to hear like a smooth, melancholy, but still hard rap song that has a lot of really good singing, you like The Waiting Game. That's a great track right there. So Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead is a great track with the vocal tone being just awesome. And Eddie Baker gives a great feature on that. So overall, this is one of my favorite I've heard of the year. And the cover is awesome. Um... There's a lot of different types of tracks on it, and I'm just trying to get into Bones, and I'm going to be honest with you, first Bones album I've heard, I'm going to be honest with you, I can't lie to you, okay, but maybe one day I'll do a, a tier list of him, you know, I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm not going to tell you that I'm a big fan of Bones, I'm not, it's not that I'm not a big fan of him, it's just I've never really dove into him, you know, so what I'm going to say about this is that um, there's a lot of, there's cool variation, and the song Safe and Sound has the best guitar out of the songs on this project. You know, there's obviously some cool guitar stuff. There's also some cool spooky sort of tracks on here. Um, you know, what's cool about Safe and Sound is it sounds nothing like Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead. And that's what makes this project so great. So the balance works with the sounds. But when some artists try uh, to do this, it does not work. But for Bones, it does. And after hearing this project, I understand why he has a cold fan base. Because he's perfected this and he's kind of really popularized it. And he is a SoundCloud rap pioneer. You know, you look at interviews with people like, you know, Peep. And they're all like, oh, yeah, definitely inspired by Bones. Definitely inspired by Bones. Because he's the one who kind of uh, popularized the sound really did this. And, and um, yeah, I want to check out more Bones. Um, if you have any Bones song recommendations or anything, comment down below on the YouTube. Or DM me on Instagram. Or, um... I don't know, man. If you know me and you're listening right now, just hit me up. You know how it goes. So, yeah, that was Burden by Bones. That was the album review of that. I really messed with it. And I would say, I would say, I would say about 9 out of 14 tracks get on the playlist. That's 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 how I rate things. It's saying how many tracks would go on the playlist out of all the entire track list that's how i rate albums and review them and i'll review ruga gambino's latest single he just got signed to jasu records shouts out to josh the ceo just bought his amazing pandemic to profit ebook you can definitely check that out real cheap ebook 10 bucks and you're going to learn some cool tricks but he also is a really good entrepreneur he recently signed ruga gambino to his label and, man, I have to say, Ruga Gambino, he, he always knows when to pull through with a fire beat. He always has the best ad libs, and he always knows what to do. He always knows how to deliver something that is going to be remembered. You know, he, he always has some punchline that's awesome. I love that he, that he always say something iconic. Like, for instance, in this, he's like, Hellcat, go too fast. You know, he's always trying to do something iconic. The cover art, amazing. And um, I'm excited to see the music video for this. I'd say the best part about this is the 808s. The 808s in it are awesome. And it's always nice to hear the mixing in this is always good because you have Giovanni from Gritty Records, who's one of the greatest local uh, engineers I've ever heard of. And I've actually seen him work. And he just knows what the fuck he's doing. Like, he is a great engineer, Giovanni. So, shouts out to the fellas at Gritty Records. So... Yeah, dude, like, 
head headlock is is what to like Rudy Gambino is what to look out for. You know, he's on a new label. He's starting off fresh, but Heartbreak Hotel is his album in the works and it's coming out soon and he also got a lot of great collaborations with live out i have to say this is probably top three ruga gambino and has the most potential i'd have to say the green light one was also really good i got closer headlock and green light with matos shout out to matos matos another amazing local delaware artist and um yeah definitely check out headlock by ruga gambino another great great track so you know what it is. Nostalgic case. Roll it. We got the good, the bad, and the ugly. I play the theme music, but I, it's kind of corny. Everybody plays the theme music. Everybody's like, oh, I'm going to play the theme music because it's iconic like we get it we get it this song this, this is a movie and it has theme music whoa <laughs> like what how is it? i don't know uh, i can't with that it's funny like we get it we get it this is iconic theme music okay so the good the bad and the ugly is like a real adventure movie now this isn't like i am really watched this fairly recently i'm gonna be honest with you probably a couple months ago but this is a really old movie, and it's a real good adventure movie. So coming off of me, who just loves some, like, Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, I love Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, I cannot get enough of Pirates of the Caribbean. Like, it's such a fun, like, um, adventure series. Like, I'm, I'm big on adventure movies. I feel like they haven't died, but... The ones that are big are often... It's all... the Adventure movies now are often seen as an element of something greater seeing as like there being an adventure superhero movie an adventure uh you know something there's no like straight up just adventure movies i feel like what's cool about this adventure movie is that it's a western and uh <coughs> fuck so excuse me or bless me but so the thing about this adventure movie is that it's a western obviously it's one of the I most iconic movies ever Sergio Leone I'd have to say this is maybe my favorite Sergio Leone movie I've I've say I'd say like a once upon a time in America is better which is also the best uh Robert De Niro movie ever made um like in terms of like if you if you get if you know struggles of life you'll get once upon a time, once upon a time in America but if you want like a fun sort of iconic movie that like you always have something away from it there's three characters obviously the good the bad and the ugly they're all like characters and, and like they're all, like each one is tied to each one but like there's certain iconic things in this movie such as Clint Eastwood we're always having a stogie you know in his mouth and he's like saying it or someone you know, it's like this and I got the stogie and you know Clint Eastwood <laughs> you know that iconic it's iconic and um there's also like a cool like civil war battle going on you know and they're obviously there's an adventure to get some hidden tr like money treasure thing that they're looking for or something like that because they're all bounty hunters and they hear oh there's some money dug up over here and here like and they're all looking for it and there's just like scale set pieces the desert scenes are awesome i love desert scenes when people are like in the middle of the desert and they're starving they're like they, they have the water they're like oh, i just i said no water you know what i mean they're, they're like they have that it's sort of so desperate and like grimy you know that's what i love about like adventure movies it's like you really see them how do i say this in a non corny way you see them go through some of the biggest struggles in someone's life that you never think you'd go through and you're just seeing it on a screen but you realize like maybe maybe one day if i go hiking i'll run out of water or something like that i'll be in a national park and i'll run out of water and or something like that and you kind of wish you like sort of had that urge to like get adventurous and stuff like that and it really like i don't know like when i watch cool adventure movies it makes me want to hike you know it makes me want to hike i don't know why it, you know um and that's why i love those desert scenes is is it's iconic and there's also cool train sequences and stuff like that and it really gives me like lawrence of arabia vibes and stuff like that and um and it is pretty violent i could definitely see this now is this rated r i'm a, this is a stupid question probably um the good, the bad, and the 
ugly. Let me, let me, I need to Google. <laughs> is, is it rated R? Who knows? It is rated R. Okay, never mind. But yeah, it is pretty, pretty darn violent. But there also is cool character moments, like when one character connects with one of his more religious brothers who disagrees with his sort of nomadic criminal lifestyle. Because a lot of these characters are criminals, bounty hunters, uh, you know. So, and what's cool about the three characters are all looking for one thing. And um, there is a dynamic bet between two characters that's different than the third character. I'm really can't think of the names right now but like two of the characters live and some of the char one of the characters dies and it, they have this sort of cool playful energy similar to how like in Pirates of the Caribbean the characters don't always agree with each other you know they're they're kind of always negative towards each other but they also kind of surpass their differences to get their goals that's what's cool about adventure movies is not there's no one always there's not always one character that's like better than everybody or uh you know greater than everybody you know they're sort of all on the same goal and that's what makes it so cool is that there, that's why there is an ensemble there is an enjoyable amount of characters and it's not just like one character one team getting this it's like you don't know who's the team you know but you do know the goal that's what's cool about this when a movie knows its goal when it knows its direction when it knows what it is okay and this is a real fun movie and um yeah this is you've got to check this one out good the bad and the ugly it's a classic and um that's what we got for Hascast. I'll definitely be doing more of these. I got a list of films I'm trying to review. I got Minari, Flora, Flora and Ulysses, Cherry, and Tom and Jerry. Those are the four next. I'm trying to get five Hascast down this month. Um, obviously, I've come through with the interviews. Let me see. Let me have a list of the interviews I got coming up soon. So, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I'm gonna find a list. Okay, we got um, the Court to See the Beast interview is getting rescheduled. DJ Young is tomorrow. DJ V Siren is in 30 minutes. Naj is in 8:30 on Monday. Um, and Josh, the CEO, Jasu Records, his owners, will be eight and Thursday or something. So yeah, those that's what you can look forward to in the future of Mike has interviews. Also, be sure to check out the Madsnet Creative Collective. They got some really good music. And I have some ties to them. I'll be casting out my thoughts to you. I'm the next task cast.